And three says to prove this identity, prove that the tan of A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B. So to do this proof, we have the tan of A plus B. And we know that the tan of A plus B is equal to sine over cos. So it's gonna be equal to the sine of A plus B divided by the cos of A plus B. That's what we're gonna have. But then what do we know? What do we know? We now know that sine A plus B, we know a formula for this. This is given by, the formula is given by sine A plus B is sine, let me write it here. This formula for sine A plus B is given by, give me some space. It's given by sine A cos B plus cos A sine B divided by the cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. That's that formula. All right, nice and easy. So now you may ask, so what are you going to do now, sir? What are you going to do? Yes, sir, what are you going to do? Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide through by cos A cos B. And you might say, why? I notice I have a one right here, so I need this part to be a one. So I'm going to divide you by cos A cos B. Why is this equal not moving? Come with me not equal. Not getting the equal to move, so let me put another equal here. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna divide through by cos A cos B. I'm gonna divide each term. So now I'm gonna divide both the numerator and the denominator by cos A cos B. So I'm dividing the numerator, the denominator by cos A cos B. I know it looks like a minus, but it is a divide. So now, when I do the division, sine A cos B over cos A cos B, sine A, let me write it out, we will see it better. We're going to get sine A cos B. That part is divided by cos A cos B. Then we have a minus Then we have a plus This part now which is cos A sine B This part is divided by cos A cos B all over So in the numerator, that's the division for the numerator. Now we're gonna look at the division for the denominator. The division for the denominator will be cos A cos B over cos A cos B. Nice. And then of course, we have a minus, a sine A sine B over a cos A cos B. When you do that division now, what are we gonna get? Let's work it out now. As we can clearly see right here, cos B cancels a cos B, cos A cancels a cos A, cos AB cancels cos AB, and now what you get is sine A over cos A is tan A, so that's how you get tan A. 
right there, plus sine b over cos b is tan b. So that's why you get a tan b right there. Then this is all being divided by this part, cancel each other to just get one. Then you get minus sine a over cos a is tan a and sine b over cos b is tan b. So that's how you get tan a, tan b. Nice and easy, soft. Nice. That takes care of this. Part two. Part two says, given that sine A is three over five, where A is acute and angle B is obtuse, find an expression for tan A plus B. I would just go ahead and work it out, but because them say obtuse, they throw me off. So I, I have to put a like a little diagram right here. And I'm gonna just put a triangle in the second quadrant. You have the angle B and it's a cos B is minus one over two. So it says minus one because it's in the second quadrant. The hypotenuse is two. And so we need to find this length. This length will be two square two square minus two square minus minus one square square rooted and so this is the square root of three all right that is for this triangle that's for the triangle with b all right all right now the one in in the first quadrant no need to check let us tell us that we have a triangle hypotenuse is five Opposite is three, so adjacent is four, angle is A. So we have a two triangle them now. And express tan A plus tan B in this form. Now, first thing is we're gonna write down the formula. Tan A plus tan B. We just prove it a while ago that it's tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B. So tan A plus tan B is equal to tan A plus tan B, tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B over one minus tan A tan B. Nice and easy, soft. So now one minus that, so let's go ahead. Tan A now, looking in this triangle, tan A is going to be ad opposite over adjacent. So tan A is three over four. Plus tan B, tan B is opposite root three over adjacent. So it's plus minus root three. over one minus tan a tan b. So it's over one minus tan a times tan b is root one minus root three over four. And they want it in this form. Oh gosh, we're gonna have to rationalize. <coughs> so they're giving us a module one concept in module two. So we're gonna have to rationalize. So one minus this first and foremost, I'm just gonna write it as, I'm gonna join it as one. Instead of saying one minus that, I'm going to say four minus three root three over four. All right, and I'm gonna simplify the numerator I can simplify the numerator as three plus, or three minus four root three over four. I'm gonna simplify the numerator as 
3 minus 4 root 3 over 4. Simplifying it. Joining it as one fraction. All over 4. Now, how does this simplify now? If we have a fraction divided by a fraction, just writing it down, if I have a fraction A over B, and it's being divided by a fraction C over D, it's really multiplied. Instead of dividing by C over D, it's multiplied by D over C. So it's going to be this times this over This was four. So all of this is going to be simplifying to be a times d. So it's going to be four times this. Four times three is twelve. Minus four times four is sixteen. So it's four minus sixteen root three over this times this, which is sixteen minus 12 root 3. So now I'm going to have to rationalize. Now I'm going to have to rationalize and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. But before I do that, I think I can simplify this. I can factor out 4. I can factor out 4. Because this is a big number, I can factor out 4. And instead of writing 12, factor out 4 to get 3 minus 4 root 3. Factor out the 4. Put the 4 right here. And then the same thing in the denominator, I can factor out 4. Don't want to be working with such big numbers. I'm going to factor out 4 out here as well. I'm going to have 4 minus 3 root 3. These 4s apparently cancel. So all I need to do is multiply by 4 plus 3 root 3. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4 plus 3 root 3. divided by 4 plus 3 root 3. So when I multiply them across, what I'm going to be getting is 3 times 4, that's 12. This times this is 3, that's 9, that's 9 root 3. Then this will be minus 16 root 3. So 9 root 3 minus 16 root 3 is minus 7 root 3. And then I have minus 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. That's minus 36. Divided by, this is now the difference of 2 squared, which is 3 root 3 times 3 root 3. That's 27. And 4 squared is 16. So 16 minus 27 is minus 11. So in the denominator of negative 11. So now to express it in the form that they want, it's going to be 12 minus 36. 12 minus 36 is negative 24 over negative 11 minus 7 root 3 over negative 11. And since minus and minus, I can just put plus. So it's plus 7 root 3 over 11. And so we get this question. Nice and easy soft. Next part. It says solve this equation. 
Solve this equation, sine square theta minus two cos square theta plus three cos theta plus five equals zero. To solve this equation, we have to change sine squared to one minus cos squared. So sine squared theta is really one minus cos squared. So change sine squared to one minus cos squared theta plus, so we have one minus cos squared theta minus two cos squared theta. So one minus, one minus cos squared minus two cos squared really becomes one minus three cos squared theta plus three cos theta plus five equals zero. Good. All right, that's what we have. So now we're gonna bring everything to the other side. One plus five is six. Bringing it over, we're gonna get three cos squared theta I know you say minus sign there, but I'm gonna bring everything over to the other side to get three cos squared theta minus three cos theta, because I divide you by negative one, or bring it to the other side, any way you want to look at it. And then one plus five is six, so it's gonna become minus six. All I did was divide you by negative one equals zero. So let me put what I did to get the positive three. I divided through by negative one. Now after I divide through by negative one, I'm gonna do another division. I'm gonna divide through by three. So now I'm gonna divide through by three to get cos square theta. I divide through by three, I get cos square theta minus cos theta. minus two is equal to zero. All right. Now, can this be factorized? Can it be factorized? I'm just gonna go straight to quadratic formula when it looks a little different. To, well, it can be factorized. It's just, let's just factorize it. It can be factorized. Let me see now. Signs are different, the greater product negative. So it has to be two and a one. Minus is associated here, and plus is associated here. This must be cos theta. And this part is cos theta. Nice. And so now, really and truly, this part won't have any solution. And so therefore, we only need to look at the part that is gonna give us that cos theta is minus one. Because this part won't be giving us any solution. We don't need to check that that part has no solution. Because cos theta can't equal two. So cos theta being equal to negative one, we draw our circle and we want where cos is negative. Cos is positive, C-A-S-T, cos is positive here and here. So we want the solution in the second and third quadrant. So first we find out the principal acute angle, which is cos inverse of one, cos inverse of one. When you find cos inverse of one, that will give you the principal acute angle cos inverse of one is zero. And so the angle over here is pi minus zero, which is pi, and the angle here is pi plus zero, which is also pi. All right, the cos of, cos of pi is minus one, yes. But look at this, it says it wants theta to be between zero and four, four pi. So we can go around the circle four times. So what we're gonna get then is theta can be equal to pi. Going around the circle one more time, we can also get theta is two pi 
That makes sense. Theta can be two pi. Two pi. No, two pi would be associated here. Pi plus two pi is three pi. My apologies. Pi plus two pi is three pi. Two pi plus pi, yes, that's three pi. So theta can be pi or theta can be three pi. All right, that's by going around the circle one more time. So for those who don't understand how we get the three pi, we went around the circle one more time. So that gives us three pi. That's how we got the three pi. So pi and three pi are the solutions. Nice. Good. All right, next part of the question, it says, f of theta is equal to six cos theta plus eight sine theta, express it in the r sine form. So first we need to find out what is r. R is equal to a square, which is six square, plus eight square, square rooted, six square plus eight square, square rooted. And when we square root that, we're getting 10. That's gonna be R. Then alpha is tan inverse B over A. So alpha is equal to tan inverse eight over six. Alpha is equal to tan inverse eight over six. Alpha is tan inverse eight over six, so eight divided by six. We find tan inverse of that at 0 0.927. 0 0.927. That's alpha, 0 0.927. All right, now that we have that for alpha, now we can express f of, f of theta in that form. So it's gonna now be f of theta, f of theta is now equal to 10 sine, it's equal to 10 sine, theta plus alpha, so it's 10 sine theta plus 0 0.927. Nice and easy, soft. Now that we finish this question, moving right along, part two. Part two say, hence or otherwise, find the general solution of f of two, f of theta equal to, hence mean you set this equation equal to two. So we're going to set 10 times the sine of theta plus 0 0.927. Come on, give me the dots, 0 0.927. We're gonna set this equal to two. So setting this equal to two, First thing we do is divide through by 10. Dividing through by 10, we're gonna get the sine of theta plus 0 0.927 is equal to two over 10. And two over 10 is really one over five because I divided through by 10. So now, what you're gonna do is remember one general solution. All right, so first thing you do is find sine inverse of this. So you're getting that theta plus zero point zero point nine two seven. It's equal to sine inverse of one over five. All right, and so what would be the general solution? So in you're gonna get that. So if you wanted to write a general solution for theta, let's do it now, general solution.
general solution. So the general solution, as you know, there's going to be two values, two values. So the general solution is going to be theta is equal to sine inverse of this minus this so general solution is theta is sine inverse of one over five plus 0 0.927 plus two n pi. I can go around the circle again, so plus two n pi. That's one possible answer. Another possible answer is going to be pi minus all of this. Wait, when you bring it over, it becomes minus. So this shouldn't be plus, this should be minus. Sine inverse one over five minus. Then another possible answer will be pi minus sine inverse of this. So it's pi minus sine inverse of one over five. minus 0 0.927. You need to put a bracket to show that you work out the pi minus this first, plus two n pi. That's the general solution. Many persons may want to write like an actual number. So I don't know, depending on how you feel, maybe you like to write actual numbers. So you can go ahead and say sine inverse one over five minus 0 0.927 and you get negative something. See so how theta is negative. So maybe you feel good by writing down here. I don't know, it does depend on you. Some persons might feel prefer better to write minus 0 0.7 two five plus two plus two n pi and some persons might feel better to write or pi minus that now which is pi minus sine inverse one over five minus zero point nine two seven some persons might feel better in writing two point 0, 0.13 plus 2n pi, depending on how you prefer write your answer. All right, so those are also possible solutions for theta. It's the same thing, this and this is the same thing. All I did was put the numbers there. All right, so any way you prefer to write it, you're fine. I prefer to leave it this way, exact. Okay. Moving right along. We reach question four. Question four says, the circle with equation x squared plus y squared minus four x plus two y minus two equals zero. And C2 have a common center, given that C2 passes through minus one minus two, Express C2 in the form this. So circle, the circle C1 has this equation and C2 have a common center. Oh, that was the information. They have the same center. Okay, that's a nice question. Since they have the same center, we can find the center of C1 the center of C1 is gonna be, that looks like two. The center of C1, so C1 center, so C1, the center is really divide the minus four, it's by negative two, and you get two, one. So that's the center of the circle. And then C2 passes through minus one, minus two. So you have a circle, this is C2, you have two one is right here. This is two one.
sorry. <laughs> two one is the center of C two. I don't know why I put the point on the edge. You have this point right here. Let me label it on the outside, which is two one. And then you have minus one, minus two. Minus one, minus two could be, maybe it could be here. That's minus one, minus two. So if we find the length of this line, it will be the radius. So the length of this line will be the radius. And so the radius R is going to be equal to x1 minus x2 square. So it's two minus minus one, which is three square plus one minus two, which is minus one, which is really just one square, square rooted. And so the radius is equal to nine plus one is 10. So the square root of 10. So what does that mean? That means that the equation for C2, that means that C2 is given by, C2 is given by x minus two square plus y minus one square and it's equal to r square but the root of 10 square is just 10 it's equal to 10 so this is the answer nice and easy soft this is the answer we don't even need so much space that's the answer for this one easy they're giving away three marks So now it says the equation L1 is x plus 3y equal 3. Determine whether L1 is a tangent to the circle C1. So to determine if L1 is a tangent to C1, I'm going to sketch C1 for us. So C1 is a circle that has center 2, 1. And if L1 is a tangent to it, if L1 is a tangent to C1, that means that, why I keep jumping? That means it only touches the circle at one point. So maybe it touches it somewhere there at one point. All right, so this would be L1. You would have to touch the curve at one point. So there's, there should only be one point of intersection. So the equation of C1 is x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y minus 2 equals 0. Let's write that down. We're going to solve them simultaneously, and we should only get one point of intersection. So the curve had equation. Let's write it down. It was x squared plus y squared minus 4x minus 2y minus 2 equals 0. Let's check that again. Yep, so that was it. All right. Now, looking right here, if I were to make x the subject from the first equation, x is really 3 minus 3y. So I'm going to substitute x as 3 minus 3y into the curve. Substituting 3 minus 3y into the curve, I will get 3 minus 3y, 3 minus 3y uh, square. This up here typed wrong. I want to fix this. That should be 3 minus 3y. Three, 3 minus 3y uh, square plus y square plus y square minus 4 times x where x is 3 minus 3y minus 2y minus two equals zero. 
Now let's see. Let's go ahead and solve this equation to see if we get only one point of intersection. Now going ahead and solving this, it's first time square, which is nine, minus twice the product of the two. Three times three is nine, nine times two is 18, so that's minus 18y. Plus second term square is nine y square. Plus y square again. Then we have minus four times three is negative 12. Then we have minus four times minus three y minus and minus give us plus. So we get plus four times three is 12. We get 12y minus 2y minus 2. And this is equal to 0. Nice and easy. Soft. So since that's what we're getting now, all we need to do now is add up our like terms, 9y square. And y square is 10y square. And then we have minus 18y plus 12y is minus 6y, minus 6y minus 2y is minus 8y. And then we have nine minus 12 is negative three, negative three minus two is negative five. So we have 10y squared minus 8y minus five equal to zero. No, whoa, this can't factorize, can it? Can I factorize it easy? When I can't factorize it easy, I'll just go to quadratic formula. So y is equal to minus eight, which is eight, plus or minus the square root of b square, which is eight square, minus four times a, which is minus four, times 10 times minus five over two times a over two times 10, which is 20. So I'm getting that y is equal to, when I work out that square root, you're gonna get that eight square minus four times 10 times minus five, that's 264. And the square root of 264, I don't even need to work it out, I can stop. So I'm getting eight plus or minus the square root of 264 over 20. So what does this mean? This means I'm getting two point of intersection so I can stop right here and say, since the discriminant, the discriminant which is equal to 264, which is greater than zero, we are getting two points of intersection. And so the line, the line is not, a tangent line. It's not a tangent. It is actually a secant line. It's a secant line. It's, a, it's just a regular line that pass through the circle. That's all. So maybe the line looks something like this. If I were to click on the line, the line just looks something like this. Right, it has passed through two points. Just a secant line. Nice. Moving right along. Vectors. It says now, express the vector PQ in the form XI plus YJ plus ZK. So first thing, vector PQ is equal to vector of the last minus vector of the first. So some CSEC maths here, some CSEC ADMA, says OQ minus OP 
OQ minus OP. OQ minus OP, that's going to be equal to vector OQ is 1 minus 2, 4. That's vector OQ minus vector OP. Vector OP is 3, 1, 2. We do the subtraction. What we're going to get is 1 minus 3 is minus 2. So get minus 2i. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3j. 4 minus 2 is plus 2k. That's vector PQ. Nice and easy. So. Nice. That's vector PQ. And it says determine the Cartesian equation of the plane which passes through the point Q and is perpendicular to PQ. So the equation of a plane, the equation of a plane is given by R dot N and R dot N is equal to A dot N. Where R is a where R is just X, Y, Z, N is a normal to the plane, A is a point on the plane. When you have a plane and it says PQ, the line PQ is perpendicular to the plane. So this is the line PQ. So if PQ is perpendicular to the plane and PQ acts as a normal to the plane. And so the equation of the plane is going to be R dot N, N is minus two, minus three, two, that's r dot n, and that's equal to a dot n. a dot n is, a is the point q, and q is one minus two, four. So you have one minus two, four, dot n, dot n, and n is again, minus two, minus three, two. And so working this out, we're gonna get r dot n works out to be, this is now minus two x minus three y plus two z, and that's equal to one times minus two is minus two, plus minus two times minus three plus four times two. And so what we finally get is minus two X minus three Y plus two Z. And that's equal to, we work that out minus two plus minus two times minus three plus four times two, that's 12. Nice and easy, soft. That takes care of this question. So this is the equation of the plane. All right, that is the Cartesian, the Cartesian equation of the plane is minus two X, minus 3y plus 2z equal to 12. Nice and easy, so. Now, next line, it says the vector equations of lines L1 and L2 are given by L1 is minus one my plus j minus 2k plus alpha times minus two plus j minus three k. And then they give us the vector equation for L2. Show that L1 and L2 intersect. If L1 and L2 intersect, then L1 equal L2. So what they're telling us then, since they intersect L1 is equal to L2. If L1 is equal to L2, at some point, 
then that means their components are equal. So that means that minus one. So if you group up the i terms, you have minus one plus minus two alpha. So that's minus one minus two alpha. That's for L1. Then right here, we're gonna have grouping up the J terms. We have J plus alpha, which is one plus alpha. And then grouping the K components in L1, we have minus two minus three alpha. And that's grouping the, that's grouping the K components for L1. Going to have a look at L2. L2 is minus two, minus two plus beta, minus two plus beta. Then we're gonna have one minus beta. And then the third equation, which is the K component, we're gonna have minus four plus beta minus four plus beta. Nice and easy, soft. Now, after we do this now, all we need to do is equate the I components for both lines, the J components for both lines and the K components for both lines and it should work out. So let's compare I components. So comparing I components, we're getting that minus one, minus two alpha. I'm gonna call alpha A in this case. And that's equal to minus two plus beta. I'm gonna call beta B. So if I were to bring over this two over here, really and truly I'm getting add two to both sides. I am getting minus one plus two is one. So I'm getting one minus two alpha is equal to beta. That's comparing the I components. Now let's compare the J components. So looking at the J components, comparing the J components, I can see that one plus alpha, one plus alpha is equal to one minus beta. But then what we said was beta, we said beta was one minus two alpha. So that means one plus alpha is equal to one minus beta, which is one minus two alpha, because that is beta. So solving them, we're getting one plus alpha is equal to one minus one gone, minus and minus give you plus, so you get two alpha. So bringing over alpha here, we're getting that alpha equals one. If alpha is equal to one, going back to over here, if alpha is equal to one, going back to over here, then that means that one minus two times one is equal to beta. And so beta is equal to one minus two times minus one is one minus two, that's negative one. So alpha is one and beta is negative one. All you need to do is check it in the K component. So check in K component. So we're gonna check to see if it is true in the K component. In the K component, we're getting minus two, minus two minus three times alpha and alpha is one. We need to check to see if that is equal to the other side, which is minus four plus beta, which is plus beta, which is minus one. So checking the first one, going up here, we see that minus two minus three times one is negative five. And then we see minus four plus minus one is negative five. And so yes, so yes, the two lines, the two lines intersect, the two lines intersect. And they do so 
when alpha is equal to one and beta is equal to negative one. Good. So we'll get them there. We're nice. Next part. It says, hence, determine the coordinates of the point of intersection. So at the point of intersection, alpha and beta equal one and minus one respectively. So using L2, using L2, using line two, using line two, where beta equal, what was beta minus one? So I'm gonna use L2. So L2, which is minus two minus beta one minus beta and around here is minus four plus beta So this we can use to find L2. So we just need to plug in beta as minus one now. So we can get that. Plug in minus one, minus two, minus minus one. That's negative one. Plug in minus one here. One minus minus one is, I think that's two. One minus minus one, that's two. And then minus four plus minus one is negative five. So the point of intersection is minus one, two, five. So point of intersection is minus one, two, minus five. That's the point of intersection. Now we can check it around here. You can also check it when alpha is one, you get, when alpha is one, you have minus one, minus two times one. Oh, I wrote it wrong right here. This is minus two plus beta, minus two plus beta. So we need to change this to minus three. Minus three. So let's change this here to minus three. So it's minus three, two, minus five. Yeah, that's the point of intersection. Moving right along, we finally